Welcome in to No Punt Intended, presented by Club Fantasy. I am your host, Joe Zolo. It is our second week of our Stars of Tomorrow series. And for those joining, please note that this is a pre recorded episode. So we will not be responding to any live comments on air. We just want to make that clear up front. We'll talk about that throughout the show. Joining us today to talk the 2022 running back class, Katie Flower from Under the Helmet. We are super excited to have her on. She was on with our Club Dynasty podcast previously with Angelo. It was a fantastic podcast. We're super excited to have her on back here. Let's get into it. Welcome in to No Punt Intended, presented by Club Fantasy. I am your host, Joe Zolo. Joining me as always, Ryan Weiss, the muted Joshua Hudson, and now unmuted. And for, I think, the first time on NPI, but not the first time with Club Fantasy, the diva of Devi, as it so lovely says underneath where her nameplate is. Miss Katie, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Thanks oh. so much for having me. We, we are super excited to have you on. One, Love talking running backs with Katie. Yes. yes. Fantastic. Now, <laughs> I, I will reiterate to those that weren't able to catch last week's show, um, we basically hand everything to the guest during these four weeks of the Stars of Tomorrow, and we come with poor comedic jokes. That's <laughs> that's what these shows tend to be. Typically right? around player comps. Typically around player <laughs> comps. Um, one thing we can all understand and agree on, Brees Hall is good. So I think I think everyone knows that, which is a great start, I think, on our part to understand that without watching a down of college football this year. So, Katie, like we did last week, we'll have your top five real, top five fantasy. And we'll start with the real life here. So your top five real life, you have Zamir White at one, Isaiah Spiller at two, Brees Hall at three, Brian Robinson at four, Jerome Ford at five. Now, Everyone and their mother believes Brees Hall will be the first running back taken, depending on, you know, it could be as early as the middle of the first, end of the first. If no running backs are taken, he's probably the first one gone in the second round. You have him at three. So explain, why do you have Zamir White and Isaiah Spiller above Brees Hall, at least in terms of real life football? I love Georgia running backs. I'm an SEC snob. I am an Arkansas Razorback fan, and so for years, the Razorbacks in football have been the laughing stock of college football, but they're getting better under Coach Sam Pittman, and we do have some high hopes for future. Uh, Rocket Sanders is a good Debbie play. If you've got somebody that's out there that plays Debbie, Rocket Sanders, remember the name. But I have always loved Georgia running backs from dating back my early Debbie days, Todd Gurley. First, I was a girly girl. Then I was a chubby girl with Nick <laughs> Chubb. Then I was a Swift girl with uh, DeAndre Swift. And now I'm a white girl. I love Zamir White. White and girl. So, That's so, a great joke. That was a great uh, joke. I mean, round of applause. That was a great joke. Thanks. It's not even a joke. But uh, <laughs> perfect. But I love Zamir White. And if it hadn't been for two ACL tears, I think he would be very much in the conversation for the number one running back in this year's class. He has had some hard luck. But I do, I do like him as a player very, very much so. I love Isaiah Spiller, Texas A&M. Again, SEC bias, Razorback fan. I watch a lot of SEC football. But I've always loved Isaiah Spiller. And even though he didn't test well at the Combine and at his pro day, I still love me some Isaiah Spiller. I do love Brees Hall. He's the complete thing. He's the real deal. When you want to talk about fantasy, he's going to be the number one running back off the board. I don't know that we're going to have a round one NFL, but I think he'll go fairly early in round two, or if not, late round one and be the only round one NFL back. I love Brian Robinson, Alabama. He was a home state kid that even though there was a lot of competition at Alabama, he stayed. 
He worked through it. He worked hard. He didn't transfer and finally got his chance. And he did well. And he looked great at the Senior Bowl. He was the number one back at the Senior Bowl. And then Jerome Ford, another ex-Alabama. I like Alabama and Georgia running backs. Again, I'm SEC biased. I tell you I'm biased, and that's true. But every one of these guys is a SEC guy except for Brees Hall. He's there because he's very, very highly talented. You can't get away from that. I don't know as much about his history and his work ethic. I can only assume to get to where he's gotten, he's got to be a pretty good, hardworking type of guy. I love the Zamir White at one. I know there's a lot of people that were really high on White, um, you know, previous to the ACL injuries. And it kind of reminds me of like Frank Gore in college. You know, he was another like highly touted running back, yeah. came in at Miami, blew out, you know, his knee twice, sunk him into the third round. And obviously we saw what kind of hit career he's had. Obviously, since then, ACL injuries, you know, they're, they're a lot more manageable. You can bounce back from them a lot easier. So I don't feel like it's going to impact White the same way that it did Ford. So I, I like I, I didn't want really want to call it boldness because I believe he was a five star running back coming into to college, if I'm not yep. mistaken. Five star. So like back. people expect him to be good. But right. there's a you see a lot of DeAndre Swift in his game. Like he's a very talented all around back, plays well on pass pro protection, uh receiving downs. He didn't get a lot of receiving work because they yielded that to James Cook. But just to, but like his, his ability but to he can. yeah, he can exactly. And th and that's and that's the challenge I think you know not just from us from like a, in the fantasy community but also like scouts with the pro teams it's like you see these guys that don't catch a ton of passes aren't utilized on third down how does that translate if they're not utilized there can they still do it and that's when you really have to dive into it right and if you look back to the Todd Gurley versus Melvin Gordon a lot of people didn't they didn't think that Melvin Gordon could be a receiver out of the backfield because he didn't do very much at Wisconsin. Yeah. Todd Gurley at least did, but Melvin Gordon has proven in the pros that yes, he has chops to receive just because they didn't do it in college. Doesn't mean they can't do it. And there are even at Georgia where they do have guys like the change of pace, like James cook in the past, it's been Sony Michelle, but Deandre Swift, when he was a freshman, he was that change of pace back. Because he had the receiving chops, that's what got him on the field. And then when he finally took over, they put him more towards, you're going to run up the middle, you're going to be our running back guy, and we'll have a change of pace guy. Georgia running backs are pretty pretty complete. And same thing with Alabama running backs. So I like the pedigree. I like, you know, I like running backs that have good, thick, steak asses. And Zamir White yeah. has a steak ass. And so does, I mean, everybody on my list, Brees Hall has a steak ass, Isaiah Spiller, Brian Robinson, Jerome Ford. Again, overlooked guys. Some of these guys, they're not the top five in fantasy by any stretch. They may shake out to be that way someday, but for fantasy purposes, I've got Brees Hall and then Kenneth Walker and then the rest is just shake the bag, you know, put them in a bag, shake them up, spill them out. You got about eight guys, four, four to eight guys that could be three through, you know, five. It really depends on the more information that we know, which will be the NFL draft is the next day. The, the landing yeah. spot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, well, it's not the landing spot so much as draft capital. Are they mm -hmm. a day two? Are they a round two kind of guy? Round three is pushing it a little bit, but opportunity stems from draft capital. And landing spot to me is secondary. I want talent. Cream rises to the top. That's what I always say. And you can get discounts on guys that don't necessarily have the premier landing spots. I think back to just a couple of years ago when Clyde Edwards Alaire first pick first running back off the board to Kansas city at the late round one, but then Deandre Swift and Jonathan Taylor were right behind early round two, but Clyde Edwards Lair was rushed up the board. Just because he couldn't spot, handle yeah. it. Right. I mean, he was well, the draft capital was there with him too. He's, he's an anomaly right. for both. He's but just yeah. a bad fit. Draft capital <laughs> doesn't always, a lot of people like that landing spot. 
And that's what drove him up the boards. They didn't look at his overall picture between his athleticism and his college production and put it all together. There were guys like Jonathan Taylor to me was pretty obviously the number one guy in that year's class. Could we imagine how dangerous Kansas City would have been if they'd taken JT instead of Clyde Edwards? <laughs> like, yeah. What the hell? Yeah, exactly. But that's uh, that's proof that just because another player likes you, aka Patrick Mahomes and yeah. Clyde Edwards Alaire and that pick, it doesn't mean necessarily that they're going to be the best person out there. Like or or good actually just right good. exactly i mean look at your board look at everything that you had with the exception of opportunity early deandre swift was right behind clad edwards lair by a few picks and then jonathan taylor was just a few picks behind him mm -hmm. so again with a lot of these running backs i do think that Brees hall and kenneth walker are the cream, this is a down year. It's a deep year, but it's a down, like anybody from three through 10 could quite well produce, but peg which one and you're a genius. So that's uh, why we bring you on Katie. So, well, so you can help us do that. <laughs> again, I don't have a crystal ball and I've got certain information. The so more fine one, damn it. Fine one. Well, Find a crystal ball. So the more information that you know, the better that you have of pegging these these guys. I do think that after Brees Hall and, and Kenneth Walker, I do like Zamir White, Isaiah Spiller. I like Brian Robinson. I think all three of those guys will be right there in that conversation. But there's probably another handful of guys also that will be in that conversation and until the NFL draft and we know what their draft capital is, that's what's going to move the needle. Do you more than, more than the actual landing spot? Like, I don't care who goes to Arizona or San Francisco or Buffalo or whatever, but do they have out of all the running backs and everybody's saying, well, this class is deep. Out of all the running backs, which ones are being selected before the others? So based on Walker and um, Hall being your top two, do you expect those to be the first two drafted running backs? I do. I would be surprised if anybody else is drafted ahead of either one of those guys. And if they are, they may get a Clyde Edwards-Alaire bump that you just, you know in your heart they don't, necessarily now if it's Zamir White I'm not going to argue like, <laughs> I mean but I I don't necessarily expect that okay I'm looking at the first round board right now who's on there <clears throat> I think realistically the only team that might take a running back in the first round and I don't think they should because they need to they have much bigger holes the Buffalo Bills that could be the only team that might swing on Brees Hall at 25 because everybody else I'm looking at, I feel has a pretty nailed down backfield in the twenties, Pittsburgh, Najee Harris, New England, Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson, James White's back, uh, Green Bay, Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon, Arizona, maybe, but they have James Conner. They brought him back for two years. Yeah. I think Dallas. he would probably go like a receiving back in like this, you know, the third exactly. or something like that. Dallas has Zeke and Tony Pollard. Buffalo, garbage. Tennessee, Derrick Henry. I was thinking Tampa, but they brought back Fournette in a three-year deal, so that's probably not going to happen. Green Bay, again. Kansas City, twice, who they already drafted a running back in the first round two or three years ago. And like then we just talked signed about. Ronald Jones. And then yeah. just signed Rojo. Cincinnati has Joe Mixon. Detroit has DeAndre Swift. There's no team past 20 outside of the Buffalo Bills that doesn't have a good running back, in my opinion or at least a good tandem duo in the backfield. Devin Singletary, Zach Moss, ain't it. So that could be the only team that takes it, but also the cornerbacks for Buffalo, subpar right now. Tredavious White has only gone down. 
their linebackers. Well, he's coming off an ACL injury too. Uh, sure. Because he, yeah, I'm just saying he yeah, tore his no, ACL. No, of course. Their safety is great. Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer, one of the best safety tandems in the league. Their linebackers, middle linebackers, okay. Outside's getting old. Their D linemen, they got Gregory Rousseau last year who came in and made a little bit of an impact, but they need more beef on that defensive line. They looked awful against Kansas City. Awful. That defense looked terrible. And granted, Kansas City's defense also looked terrible, and Kansas City should look to upgrade their defense as well. But Buffalo is realistically the only team. And then when you go into the second round, you have the same repeat of the top five picks, Jacksonville, Detroit, both New York teams, and Houston. You have the Jets again, Chicago, and then Seattle twice, maybe Seattle. But I realistically like, and again, this is Houston maybe too. Potentially Houston. Barring, and then this, of course, there's no trades. We're literally talking no trades. There's going to be trades. Yeah. But I think, what, Jonathan Taylor slipped to 52? Yeah. Some... I don't think he went that late, did he? It, well, he was, in the, he was like in the 40s, wasn't he? I, it, was some, it was some dumb number that he should not have slipped to. And talk about <laughs> he was 41. He DeAndre Swift, 41. not okay. by much, just by a few picks. 41. And... Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And Ryan, you talked about imagine if the Chiefs had Jonathan Taylor. Imagine if the Seahawks yeah. decided to draft Jonathan Taylor. Maybe Russell Wilson wouldn't be in Denver right now <laughs> and they wouldn't be in a full rebuild. It's definitely well, interesting. Line. They, well, I mean, Jonathan Taylor would help <laughs> just, just a tiny bit. It would help a tiny bit. But there's no one realistically that I would look at and say they're going to spend first round capital on a player, or specifically a running back that is going to like make a huge impact for the team. Like even Buffalo, how much is a running back going to make that much of an impact for their team? Like would they have gotten past Kansas city with a running back? Probably not. Ryan, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, and then we talked a little bit about this last week. There's so many fringe first round quarterbacks in this draft that if someone's trading into the back end of round one, it's likely going to be to get their quarterback, not to go get a running back this year. So I think it really hits on what Katie said is it's not a great draft, but it's deep, but that almost is encouraging teams to stay put or wait and see what happens because just putting it bluntly and just to echo the smart person in the room, three to 10 are all roughly the same caliber player. So why am I going to pay something to go up to get the next guy when I can just wait and let the guy who I may want more or who is the same kind of guy fall on my lap. Buffalo concerns me because they went heavy after pass catching backs this off season. They have Devin Singletary at the end of his rookie deal, Zach Moss still on his rookie deal. And I've said for years, I don't think Buffalo cares about the running back position. Now new offensive coordinator. Maybe we see that change a little bit. I don't see them spending high draft capital on a running back. I, I just, the defense. Well, Singletary, Singletary and Moss were both third round picks. Yeah. But so, the best like, running back they have on their team is Josh Allen. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hands that, down. That, that's and why at they a don't certain point, you have position. to protect him by not, by saying, dude, stop running so damn much. Like we saw what happened to Cam Newton. And, and if he keeps playing that way, like with that physicality, that's going to shorten his career. Well, we on this show have been crying about it for years. Maybe Duke Johnson finally gets his chance to be a featured tight back. He was their, no. their second. Nope. <laughs> Don't crush my hopes, Katie. <laughs> sorry. Wait. Sorry. As I say in Canada, sorry. Or in North Dakota, where right? I live, which is basically Canada. Which is Canada. <laughs> yeah. I'm further north than 50% of the Canadian population. I am, <laughs> I am Canada. So looking at – I'm using – I'm, that's not a joke. That is literally not a joke. Uh, I'm I know, using, that's why I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah, I use, I'm just on this website. It's called Tankathon. I don't know. It's a. It's just, it's nice and easy for me to read. It's all on like one little scroll instead of NFL.com where I have to scroll 17 times to find the, the 16th pick. I'm looking, their mock draft currently for the first round. There's not a running back gone in yeah, the first round. Sense. Ryan, you talked about fringe quarterbacks. Sam Howell's going at 32 to the Lions. Granted, they also have three. Yeah. Oh, heavy no for me too, Katie. I, that would be the most Detroit thing to ever do is draft Sam Howell at 32. They also, I mean, I will say they also have Jamison Williams going to the Bills, which that makes no sense because Gabe Davis is the wide receiver one. Why would you need to pad 
anybody else's stats with just an in, with just an inferior Alabama wide receiver to Gabe Davis, the playoff hero. I cannot wait for Gabe Davis to literally have two good games this year, and one of them is in Week 18 where no one can play him in their championship game. I am so excited. They also have like four quarterbacks going. That I'm not sure about this mock draft. Also, um, Katie, you're an SEC girl. Evan Neal is six seven three fifty. That's that's a big guy. That's that's a very big guy. That's Evan a, Neal is in play for that's the the offensive guard tackle. Ball, from he plays all three positions. He's still. I've been. I was reading up on it. He's still in play for the first pick of the draft. So he's yeah. he's what the Wendy's commercial meant when they said, "Where's the beef." There you go. <laughs> I mean, that's that's who that's who this website has going one to the Jaguars is Evan yeah, Neal. It's, it's gonna likely be him or Hutchinson. I yeah, just Aiden, Aiden Hutchinson is mocked there. He's as nasty. many times, if not more. Yep. He's he's absolutely nasty. But I just I didn't realize how tall and beefy yeah. Evan Neal is. That's he's a large man. It's gonna suck to see his career dwindle down in Jacksonville if he does go there. So <laughs> I don't care how good he is. One thing, all right, I just want to real quickly, because this this is going swimmingly. Katie flew through that perfectly. No turbulence, no bumps. That was beautiful. Player comp time, baby. Here we oh, go. Shoot. This is the best time. And Before honestly, you get into this, show, I do have one question. Go ahead. Just one. Katie, you, you've got Hall and Kenneth Walker as your top two in fantasy, but you've left Walker off of your real-life top five. Because so I didn't watch I, a lot of Michigan State. and I, <laughs> I, I Okay, I mean, I mean, fair enough. I get that. Yeah, no, and that's I mean, really I, that, and that's honestly, I like, I, I know that you're, you know, your your bias leans more SEC. That's you know, you live in that area, you watch more of those games. So that's kind of why I was curious, like, where does where does Walker kind of fit within this realm? Because I I'm mean, smart you, enough to know when I see the goods, and Kenneth Walker is the goods. So I, I really will admit that he is a top five, top two. Like right behind Brees Hall, he's not that far behind. He's a little bit smaller, but he had a great combine. He had a yeah. uh, fairly good as far as productivity in college and led the nation last year in force missed tackles, too. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, he's played in the ACC and he's played in the Big Ten. He's not an SEC dude, but that's not a death knell. <laughs> Here, just, here's the biggest question, though Does yeah. he have the stake ass stamp? Because if he doesn't, oh, then he's true. off my board altogether. No, I mean, I mean, I wouldn't put him up there as number two if he wasn't a stake ass. All right, there we go. <laughs> Dang, I'm sorry. So, so yes, so... you can you can put him on the, you can put him on the SAR rankings. He's there. I can't wait for my rookie drafts and whoever, whatever of these running backs that I draft, I am putting the stake emoji and the speech <laughs> emoji in the chat. And I'm and I'm gonna quote. I'm just gonna say Katie Flower. I love Diva it. The Devin. SAR rankings. I love it. Now, before we jump into player comps, I'm going to ask the question I've been pestering everybody with for the last three weeks on um, find the oh words. My goodness, dynasty shows. There you go. In a super flex, is Brees Hall worthy of taking over any of these quarterbacks at the 101? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna mince words. 100. percent Absolutely, he's the 101 over Malik All Willis, right. over Kenny Pickett, over any quarterback in my mind. Brees Hall's it. That's different opinions on two straight shows. Okay. Well, I was saying Scott Fish was on Katie's side three yeah. weeks ago because Scott yep. said Brees well, Hall. Here's the thing. Kenny Pickett doesn't have a steak ass. That's why. Well, quarterback rankings are different. They don't have an SAR. Oh, oh what what is their ranking? Uh, it's more footwork and just the intangibles. <laughs> Actual wanna... football. Man, I thought we were getting <laughs> some like, you know. No, I mean, fans. I, I want to see, I like to see what's between the ears as much as I can. Yeah. And I love watching the Mariucci when he puts them up on the chalkboard. Yeah. I haven't seen any yet this year, but that's where you can start to determine their ticker and, and their how much, how quickly they can think, comprehend, remember, all those things. But their footwork is number one. Footwork for a quarterback is number one. Fair. Because your arm follows your feet, follows your thighs, your hips, everything. The, the larger muscles make the smaller muscles go. Yep. 
Sam Darnold's feet are always pointed at the opposition, so that's why he throws. I so thought many they were pointed at the sky when he was laying <laughs> up his back, or the ground. One of the two. Yeah. <laughs> okay, for the oh for the for the comedic value of the show, this is so exciting. So I pulled up your top five. I will pull up Kenneth Walker in here as well, but I pulled up your top five, and I have the player profiler, best comp, best comp, and the NFL.com combine best comp. I'd say some of these. The player profiler comps are whew, little tough. all over the place. Basically. Yes. So, and here's the thing. From what I've seen, uh, the player profiler and NFL.com don't correlate. We said last week, uh, Carson Strong, his player profiler was Kevin Cobb. NFL.com was Drew Bledsoe. It, we were playing on different sides of the House of Representatives at that point. There was yeah. there was no meeting whatsoever. He's it was bad. Cobb. He's more Cobb than he is Bledsoe. Way, way more Cobb. Great. Fantastic. Player profiler for the win. All right, here we go. I don't know about this one, though. I don't know if you're going to agree on this one, Katie. Okay, I just want to get everyone's just like knee-jerk reactions to these because I love this. Okay, we'll start with NFL.com. On NFL.com, Zamir White is compared to Marion Barber III, former Dallas Cowboy. On player profiler, he is compared to should have been Super Bowl MVP in Miami, Damian Williams. Anybody, shout out. That is wrong. I think he's in between. Okay. I mean, that doesn't – like, Barber was such, like, a – no pun intended, a barbarian running the football. He was a brick like, house. I was saying, wasn't yeah. he huge? Yes, he was, he was a brick yeah, house. He was a monster. There was no contact that he didn't think that he could run through. I don't view that from Zamir White at all. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's not afraid to put his head down. But he's more of like, all right, I'm going to, like, one move and kind of go – like like I've said throughout this show, I he there's a lot of DeAndre Swift in his game. And then I also see like there's a lot of like kind of you know middle-aged Frank Gore. Like he falls forward, he gets that yard, he just takes what the defense gives him, but he's got the speed to like, all right, I'm I'm going because he runs a four four. Yeah. Fun fact, Marion Barber never had a thousand yard rushing season. Oh, but he had some touchdowns. Oh, he he had plenty of touchdowns, actually. <laughs> fun, fun fact, he had plenty of touchdowns. Now, uh, one thing with Marion Barber, because I completely forgot about this in his game, in for a couple seasons, 07 and 08 with Dallas, he was a 44-52 catch guy with some receiving ability. Mm-hmm. Katie, do you see that side of Barber's game mix in there? Also, Marion Barber was only 5'11", 218, but dude played like he was 6'5", 250. Because he didn't care. But Katie, do you see that receiving side at least of Marion Barber? And I think that might be where the Damian Williams side is coming from a little bit. I don't see him as a great receiver, Damian Williams, but he does have that ability. Yeah, I, I don't hate either comp, but I don't like player comps to begin with. Each Fact. player is their own. Uh, stylistically, I think that Zeus has both. I think he has the op- the ability to be a bell cow NFL three down back. He can receive, he can block, he can be the runner up the middle. If he's healthy, he's got the BMI. He's got that steak ass that you want. He's got decent yes. speed. It, and, and he has not, I don't think that he has come close in college to what he is capable of. Wow. I don't think we've seen Zeus's best yet. I say that's important. <laughs> and right. And and I think that as he if he stays healthy, because he had two ACLs, that's a lot to overcome. And and look at all the great Georgia running backs that have come through the program and he still kept his job when he came back. And the fans love him. He's a hardworking guy. Uh, again, uh, I don't hate either comp. And I do see that yes, he could be the, the hands receiving guy but he can also be that guy that'll get you those tough yards up the middle. hundred percent. Cool. All right. Isaiah Spiller next up. There is no relation to CJ Spiller, correct? With this zero. zero, zero relation. That's what I thought. Yeah, quick well, seven, like CJ, though. Six degrees of separation. We're all related to each other. There well, you go. Yeah. <laughs> He's closer related to CJ than any of us. I would imagine. <laughs> I'd hope with the same last name. All right. <laughs> His player profiler, best comparable TJ Yeldon. Okay, TJ Yeldon on NFL.com, Rashad Penny. So, 
knee-jerk reactions to that with Isaiah Spiller out of Texas A&M? Because I'm going to be honest, I don't know anything about the kid. Ryan, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, and I know every guest we have is like, I hate player comps. And I don't, I, I find them entertaining. Yeah. But the problem for me is when I hear these player comps, I don't think of these guys coming out of college. I think of the of the two guys we're talking about, the just dismal NFL careers to this point. Um, so I'm like, those are not the guys I want to be comp to. And I understand that's not what player comps are for, but I'm like, okay, so you could be a, a high draft pick that wastes away his career and hopefully has a resurgence, or you could be TJ Yeldon and just bounce around the league as a pass catching back who can't catch passes. So we're going to see how that goes. So well, let's face it. TJ Yeldon was a top six rookie pick. Yeah. Like, that's the whole game. Not That's all crazy. top six rookie picks are going to do great for you in fantasy. Absolutely. You want them to. The nice thing about Isaiah Spiller this year, because of his combine compared to all the other ones, he's going to end up late first, mid second in rookie drafts. You're going to get the discount, TJ Yeldon. So even though you didn't like Yeldon and he didn't work out, he had decent athleticism. He had decent hands and decent, you know, coming out of Alabama, he, he had that pedigree. So that's all we can hope for. Isaiah Spiller's not a pristine pro, uh, prospect, but he's gosh darn good. Yeah, he is good. He has really quick feet at the line. Like he's very good about like, like it, with that extra rusher that comes in, gets to the quarterback, like right when he gets that handoff, he's got that little shake and bake. He's got that wiggle. And that serves him well. But the problem is he doesn't have the long speed. So you're not going to see a ton of breakaway runs from him. And and we know everybody in the fantasy community, like that's what they want. Like they want the wow plays. Isaiah Spiller's not a wow play kind of guy. I am shocked to find out. I'm just looking at TJ Eldon that he is only 28 years old right now. <laughs> I was, I was going to bring this up because I, is it a requirement at Alabama you need to be at least six foot one and two hundred twenty? I saw that too. Like, <laughs> like is that a is that a requirement? It's five star or bust for their running backs, like straight up. Literally. Like Brian Robinson, homeboy had one game in high school where he had over four hundred yards and four touchdowns. Like is set that, the state record. It was unreal. Is that good? Like his first, yeah, his week, like week one of his senior year or something. I do uh, find it interesting because Josh, we talked about this a little bit before the show where and you, we touched on it on the show about where they're just not asked to do things in college. Yeldon caught 46 passes in his entire time at Alabama and then immediately was a pass-catching running back in the NFL. Yeah, that's like, a, really all he did in Jacksonville and then just kind yeah. of wasted away in Buffalo, yeah. Yep. Well, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. So he was the third running back taken in the 2015 draft, TJ Yeldon was. Yeah, just as the second round. Clicked that's what I'm saying. It, like... The Crazy. NFL gets it wrong as All the often time. it's done more than we fantasy. And well, and, and, and the other side of the coin too, and, and Katie, this is why, you know, when we do these show sheets, we kind of separate like the real life from the fantasy because NFL teams are going to value things that fantasy managers don't, you know, right. they want guys that, especially at the running back position, what, what's your pass protection like? How good are you on third downs? Can you pick Can you up play a sub special teams? Can you play special teams? Exactly. So you're going to see guys that end up getting drafted. And we're just like, wait, why did this guy that I really like, like Kenneth Gainwell, prime example last year, fantasy community was drooling over this guy. Homeboy fell to the fifth round. Yep. And I'm like, they, he was still going like stupid high in rookie drafts. And I'm just like, I mean, you know, I know he sat out a year, you know, because of COVID and everything, and he was really, really good in 2019. But it's like, maybe we should pump the brakes a little bit. Like, fifth round, there's a lot of teams that yeah, probably didn't care for him too much. So, and, and, and that's where I think someone like Brian Robinson comes into play because the fantasy community has been down on him. Like, I, I don't see very many people raving about him. But he's a guy that, you know, he comes in, does his job. He's a bruiser, picks up the blitz. He knows how to do pass protection for solid for his, on third downs for his and size, gets the extra yard for his size. He runs a four five. Yeah. And I that's mean, at 220 fat. plus like that's, that's good. Yeah. yeah. But again, and he's older. All that, uh, so his breakout age was later. 
But with you running know, like, backs, that doesn't matter as much. Their careers are so short. You've yeah. got to count on a three to five year window, and that's it. If you're lucky to get that, if you're lucky, I to get think he that. could end yep. up. I was talking actually with my roommate, who's a big Alabama fan. I th- if, if Brian Robinson, think about this for a second. If he lands in Detroit, for instance, doesn't really do much his rookie year. Maybe they move on from Jamal Williams. Pairing Brian Robinson with DeAndre Swift, I think that would be a pretty legit tandem of two guys that can handle both early down work and third downs really well. And they become interchangeable pieces, kind of similar to what New England's working with now with Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevens. And what? Make them unpredictable? Are you kidding me? Like... I know, right? Detroit doing something smart. Like I know, right. Yes, isn't isn't the NFL supposed to be predictable? But I think too, like the mindset there, like the, that culture that that Campbell is trying to build there with the Lions. I mean, Robinson's a guy that literally just waited his turn. Like he yeah. did everything right. He said, I'm gonna stick it out, I'm gonna wait my turn, and I'm just gonna be the guy that shows up and does his job. And that's I feel like that type of culture that they're trying to build in Detroit. And I feel like that could be a really good fit. What type of round would up. we see him going? I, oh, I don't know a lot about him, the pick, player. Second overall pick to Detroit, obviously. Detroit, <laughs> Number two overall. I think he definitely could be in play in the third round, potentially. But if I'm not mistaken, Detroit has two seconds. Well, here's we what I'm going to throw at you. And here's, like, I just look at things differently with that is they tendered, um, what is it, Godwin Iguabuque. They brought back Craig Reynolds. They have Williams. They drafted Jamar Jefferson last year, plus DeAndre Swift. How many running backs do they intend? Jefferson was a seventh-round pick. Reynolds was undrafted. The moment Robinson comes in with, like, second- or third-round draft capital, those other two guys don't even matter. And I'm pretty sure – pretty sure. And that's where where that draft capital game comes in. I'm pretty sure Godwin is a special teams guy as well. Yeah. Which that's what I'm saying. But still, you're how many are you going to carry on your active roster? You can only bring 53. Battle active. it out in training. You'll carry, camp, five. Maybe. You'll carry five. I mean, the the, pa- the pass carried five every year, and Brandon Bolden was the fifth running back. And when Bolden never played running back, he was the, always a special teams guy, the, but he was always listed the on the depth roster. On the Patriots is probably a little bit more quality than what we're dealing with on Detroit, where they have <laughs> the luxury of maybe going thin at other positions to go five at running back too. Though. No, very so. true, very true. Uh, but I just I want to revisit Katie's point to, you know, NFL GMs miss just as much as they hit. There's a statistic that someone did. I don't know who it was. I saw it somewhere. The first round picks, it doesn't matter where you pick, one or 32, you have a 50-50 shot of getting it right. Like legitimately in NFL history, they look at it engaged. Was this player successful? Was he helpful or was he not? In 50% of the time, they were. 50% of the time, they weren't. Doesn't matter where you pick. I wish I could quote who did it. It, Dynasty is almost exactly the same. It's nuts. You are just as likely to be successful in Dynasty in rounds three through five as you are in rounds one and two. <laughs> it's crazy. So, like that's crazy. Yeah. That's but nuts. The and, difference the difference in dynasty at least is are you randomly just listening to one set of rankings or are you doing research and understanding the methodology behind it? There's no sure anybody can 100 percent or even 80 percent like i don't even know what the statistics for hits and misses but i know percentages of debbie players that are hits versus rookies that are hits it's it's just insane oh it's it's absolutely nuts is there, I'm still looking at this 2015 running back draft class. It is horrible. It yeah. is so bad. Well, was, Joe, while you continue to do that, I, I want to bring up this question because, I, Katie, I know you do a lot of Debbie, obviously, the diva of Debbie. Um, when, when you look at these guys that come in their freshman year, how many of these guys that you were drafting super early in these Debbie drafts that we're say, we're at we, this point now where we're draft we're looking to be drafting heavily and very early in our dynasty rookie drafts. I'm just I'm saying legit. You may also want to just explain Devi a little bit just because it's not as sure. big. So you might want to sure. throw that out there for the general public. 
So Debbie is short for developmental, where you can draft a player while they're still in college and put them on your taxi squad so they don't count against your active roster. You've got NFL players on your active roster. Your taxi squad just sits there and simmers. They're trade commodities. You can, uh, you know, somebody shoots somebody and they're out of college and out of chance of going to the NFL. You can oh. drop them. You can trade them, whatever. But she went to the extreme. On that I one. did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Pull the old Florida move. I'm thinking Aaron Hernandez <laughs> in Florida. Exactly. Um, but anyway, so you can draft a kid while he's a junior going into his senior season, sophomore, freshman. The thing that you've got to look at is if there are freshmen running backs specifically, since we're talking about running backs, do they already have a steak ass or are they going to have to put on 40 or 50 pounds to get there? That's unheard of in college. If you're 175 pounds coming into college, I don't care what kind of running back you are. You're off my radar. If you are, wow. you got to no be at least 195 to catch my attention. And as a freshman, pounds in three years, as a freshman, because yeah, you can put on 20 pounds easily in the four years, three years, whatever it is. And, uh, you know, but you look at the college statistics, a lot of those guys don't gain that much weight. Wow. So does it matter? The bell cow backs in the NFL it does matter. Most of them are 220 pounds or more. So Tutu Atwell never made the Debbie roster for he, you. He did not. He no. didn't even make the rookie roster for okay, me. He'd have to. He would have yeah. to have duplicated himself. He would have. <laughs> right. li- he would have literally had to gain A 75 pounds to even. <laughs> he would have had to gain almost half of his body weight for him to even be considered. On Katie's Debbie roster, that's I was, I'm, you know was the, the the you've got different degrees of the SAR. You've got the prime fillet, and then you've got the the sirloin, and they're okay. good. You know, different steak asses. Yeah. But then you got hamburger butts. The guys are like <laughs> 180, yeah. 185. But then Tutu Atwell is shaved Philly steak for a for a Philly cheesesteak sandwich. Nice. Oh, that just hurt. <laughs> well, and you got to love a Philly cheesesteak sandwich, but dude, a prime filet is so much better. Yeah, it's I mean, for sure. Tutu, right. you, you, heard, you heard it here first. If you're listening, Tutu Atwell, you are prime shaved <laughs> Philly yeah. cheesesteak, supporting <laughs> Katie. You so, are a shaved chill, Philly cheese. That is fat. You can, that's hard to say very quickly. So, when you go back, yeah, to- load that bitch up with cheese in that point. <laughs> <laughs> so the question was: of these guys that are on the radar now for the top running backs, how did they look when they were freshmen and sophomores as Debbie players, as Debbie prospects? Zamir White was one of the top guys. Isaiah Spiller and Brees Hall, all three of those guys have been in the conversation from the get-go. Kenneth Walker did not join that club until about two to three years in Mm. and now he's finally because of his athleticism and his production he's backing it up but how much weight then do you put into that like as sort of like a we'll call it a late breakout so to speak it wasn't but he wasn't if you look back at his production it wasn't just only in the one season he's had the production at two different schools uh you know granted they're acc and big 10 but (laughs) But he's produced at two different schools all the way from his freshman season on. But he's gained a little bit of weight. He's shown his athleticism. He was just off the radar because, I, I guess, conference-wise, like hmm. a lot of analysts are SEC. And yeah. it's not the only conference. I've seen a lot of guys from the smaller schools. But, again, it, Debbie isn't a race. It isn't necessarily who drafted him first or who was onto this player first, because you look at a guy like Braylon Allen running back for Wisconsin. He was originally going to be a linebacker. So he wasn't on anybody's Debbie radar. And then he not only declared early, but switched positions 
and had a heck of a freshman season. And now he's on everybody's radar. Wee woo, wee woo. Yeah, exactly. But Zamir White, Isaiah Spiller, and Brees Hall from the gate have been tops of this class. Brian Robinson didn't happen until later. Jerome Ford, Kenneth Walker, and and name any name. I mean, Max Borgi was a big, huge Devi name a couple years ago, and now he's being projected fourth or fifth round rookie pick. So no it, bueno. yeah, exactly. So it it doesn't necessarily if you're big in Devi, it doesn't mean that you're going to be big in rookie. Okay. Awesome. And I, well, I've been looking at the 2015 draft again. I just want to, this could very well be the t- uh, replication 2022 draft of the 2015 draft. Cause I'm looking at two really good running backs, Todd Gurley, Melvin Gordon, then TJ Yeldon, Amir Abdullah, Tevin Coleman, Duke Johnson, David Johnson. So like Katie said, it's Kenneth Walker, Brees Hall and shake the bag, at least in terms of <laughs> fantasy football. Yep. And then the quarterbacks, Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota, Garrett Grayson, Sean Mannion, Bryce Petty, Brett Hundley, and Trevor Simeon. This could very well be a weird replication, at least from quarterbacks and running backs of the 2015 class. And I will say, like, with the receivers, I don't think that's true. You had Amari Cooper at four. Remember when the Bears drafted Kevin White at seven? Oh, yeah. what a And what Devontae a Parker was not that far behind. Yeah. Devontae Parker was 14. Aguilar, <laughs> Philly <laughs> Eagles at 20. They just love drafting piss poor receivers right in that area of the first round. Yep. Um, Brashad Perryman, Philip Dorsett. Those are your first round wide receivers. I think the receiver class this year is going to be much better, but I think quarterbacks I, and running backs could be a duplication of what we see in 2015. I say Josh hates the receiver class. That, that yeah. Dorsett pick annoyed me so much. Like I, as a Hurricanes fan, like I loved him in college, but the only reason he went in the first round is because he ran like a four two nine at the yep. combine. Like it was uh, Austin speed does kill. 10. They say yeah. speed kills. Speed does kill his it, career. It, it kills yeah. his career. NFL, NFL GMs. <laughs> John Ross, Henry Ruggs, Tavon uh, Alston. Yep. Henry yep. Ruggs in a whole different scenario. Yeah. With, yeah. He, yeah. He kills twice. Yeah. Mm. No lies. It's tough. <laughs> All right. We're going to go to the rest of the player comps that I have. And then we will wrap up with where we think everyone's going to land. So I'm just going to fly through these because, again, I think these are very interesting. Brees Hall compared to Jonathan Taylor. I'll take it. You don't have to say anymore. No, (laughs) not even fucking close. She says not even the same stratosphere. Well, Katie, how about this one? Do you like Matt Forte? Not really. I I mean, it wasn't Forte like six, two. I thought he was basically a wide receiver. Forte is one of the best receiving backs ever. (laughs) Stylistically, they're not even close. No. I was going to say, I'm like, Brees Hall doesn't strike me as a Matt Forte. No, no, no not no. at all. That's not his forte, but um, outside of that, no. Katie, That's- you're stealing our thunder. We're the ones that are supposed to yeah. bring the jokes Sorry, here. Right? Come on, the jokes. I thought I could. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come right, on, so- you, didn't, you didn't tell me I couldn't be. <laughs> That's my forte. <laughs> Matt, Matt Boom. Forte, 6'1", 220. Okay, that's what they have Brees Hall listed as too. So, but, fair enough. oh yeah, so that's the comp. Come on, hold, hold on. They like, have, oh, p- no. player profiler has him at five eleven, and so does the NFL Combine. Oh wow, I'm at uh, what is it? But still, if you're just doing a player comp Sports based on their physical six, size, that's the most. Well, and that and that's like so. I know player profiler kind of the way that they they generate their comps they they associate like they 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 take the height the weight but then a lot of like the you know it's like all the measurables yeah yeah, they 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 use more of the analytics side of it and i think that's where they were able to spit out quote unquote jonathan taylor because size wise they're similar but i don't think anybody expected either of them to run a Four three nine forty exactly, and I think yeah. that's where some of that comp comes into play. But I, I will say, if he can replicate even a little bit of Matt Forte, especially in the receiving game where he had hundred and thirty targets in twenty fourteen, that'd be great. I'll take yep. that in fantasy football any Forte day of the week. 
fantasy. Oh, he was he was Duh. fun for fantasy. He was a oh beast, absolute beast. Okay, Jerome Ford. Did I get that? Was that correct? Yeah, Jerome Ford, uh, who you have at five in real life. His best comparable for player profiler, Joshua Kelly. For NFL.com, LaMichael P. Ryan. That is not so, hopeful. I was just going to say, those are the ones I don't like. I mean, I understand that's not what we're comparing, but my goodness. Yeah, that's but those are like, good. those are kind of bigger, slow guys. Like Ford ran a sub four five. I, I'm Josh. I am here. Reporting. I, I know. I'm just thinking aloud. That's what's all. happening. That, that, that's, those comps yeah. don't really, they don't inspire confidence for starters, but they don't no. make much sense either. Brian well, Robinson. Gus bus is his player profiler one. And Chris Carson would be NFL.com. So I don't hate either one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was about to say, I don't hate okay. either one. I, I think that the, the two that he's compared to are better at breaking tackles than Brian Robinson personally, at least from a head on perspective. Hey, Gus right. Edwards is a literal steamroller. Yeah, he, yes. he is a steamroller. And last one, Kenneth Walker. I'm going to start with his NFL.com one because I think the oh, play, player profiler, the player profiler one is wow. Okay. NFL.com. Willie Parker. I had to look up this name because I'd forgotten who Willie Steelers. Parker was for a second. Oh, man. Yeah. Dude, dude bald. Parker had some seasons, man. He balled in Pittsburgh and he was, yeah, he, did. he was fast too. I, I recall when I saw his face, a I very different style of Pittsburgh running back. Yeah, because I mean, he came. He was there at the same time that Bettis, Jerome Bettis, was on kind of like the tail end of his career. The tail end like of his career. Form that like, you know, thunder lightning type tandem. Yeah, Willie Parker only played 04 to 09, so short career because he came out at age twenty four. But yeah, his his nickname was literally Fast Willie. Yeah, Fast Willie. He was fantastic. Player profiler for Kenneth Walker, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap up cool. with where we're it's, going. It's, it's, it's rough. Does everyone know it's Ladanian Tomlinson? <sighs> Are we like now again? I like the the well, the C.D. Lamb comparison to Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice. <laughs> that's like one that that's to the moon, no, maybe. <laughs> that, now that that's out of control. C.D. Lamb, like legitimately, is I can I can see maybe an inkling of it but don't get me wrong i think lt is way shiftier than kenneth walker like on a whole other planet and ladania tomlinson might be the best probably a top three receiving back of all time he was the original fantasy football running back cheat code he had yeah. what 28 touchdowns in a season There's yeah, no way. 100 catches in a season. <laughs> like, this, again, someone correct me if I'm wrong. There's no way Kenneth Walker is LaDainian Tomlinson in, in his best life. <laughs> if he's picked top five, maybe. He won't, he won't be. <laughs> he's not going to be. But, he yeah. won't be. Yeah. I'd well, like to he, think teams have learned that lesson, but we've seen running backs taken in the top five. Top well, ten, yes, but they were years, so. they were – better fit i mean he's yeah he's i think he's gonna be very good i do Ladanian, but no not Ladanian tomlinson Thomas. he didn't have less than a thousand yard rushing season until 2009 with the jets with the jets <laughs> <laughs> and then the year after he said don't worry guys yes, i'm okay jets 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 he had 914 the year after he he only had two seasons under 1,000 all-purpose yards. Excellent. And let's not forget the double-digit touchdowns that entire time, too. So. <laughs> it's just his total touchdowns. He did, Yes, he only had two seasons under double-digit touchdowns. At the One end season, he had 31. That Come on now. God. He's oh, LaDainian Tomlinson. Fantasy points per game, he never ranked outside of the top seven until <laughs> the Jets. Come on. Like, I'm sorry. Kenneth Walker is nowhere near that. There's no shot he's anywhere near that. Oh, uh, it, comedy. This is fantastic. All right. Katie, well, you have two sleepers, though. And I'm, I'm going to say, I fucking love your first sleeper. Pac-12, Keontae Ingram. Tell everyone else why Keontae Ingram should be on, on maybe in the, in the fourth or fifth round for people if he falls that far. 
Yeah, uh, Keontae Ingram is six foot in uh, the 215 range, and it depends on I, – I don't remember what he just tested out at, but he's a big boy. He started mm-hmm. off in Texas for three seasons, fairly productive. He had over 1,500 yards in his first two seasons with an average of five. And then he transferred to USC in his final season as a senior, 5.8 yards per carry with five touchdowns. He had some receiving yards. He's got decent hands. He He's the real deal. The question is, because it's deep, where does he land? What is his opportunity? He's yep. going to be one of my deeper sleep, sleepers because I don't think he's going to be drafted overly high in the NFL. And I don't think he's going to be particularly high. He may be an undrafted free agent in rookie mm-hmm. drafts. Depending, if you go six rounds deep, you probably – We'll see him taken, but most rookie drafts in Dynasty are three, four rounds deep. And I don't know that he's going to be taken, but he's somebody you want to be on the waiver wire as a special or late, late, late in a rookie draft. You've got to keep an so eye on So you're saying he has that like James Robinson, Elijah Mitchell type potential? Possibly, given, yes. Given uh, the again, right situation, it, Lance. Right. Okay. Based on what I know now, without knowing landing spot and opportunity, that's fair. I do, Get that. I do think that he has that kind of potential. He's not the fastest. He's not the quickest, but for right. his size, yeah. We I, we we all have the privilege of being on Hutchison Brown's one year anniversary podcast, the Young Fantasy Mind, and we did a rookie draft. I drafted two USC guys just solely because I wanted to talk about them. I got to wa- I got to see a USC game in person this year, and the two guys that stuck out to me, Drake London and Keonta Ingram because of his size and how shifty he was at six feet tall and 215. I didn't know it was measurable at the time. But his left and right movement to make players miss was something I was not expecting for a guy his size. I mean, he put multiple guys on the ground behind the line of scrimmage and in open space and had no problem running over the entire opposition as well. He had a long touchdown run that got called back. He ran over five people, like legitimately ran over five people. So I love it. And then Tyler, I just like the last name. I hope it's Batty. I hope it's. Oh, see, I don't like his name anymore. But tell me, why is he your sleeper? Why is he your sleeper? I saw him at the Senior Bowl, and that was the first time to open my eyes to him. But the thing that I look at in the Senior Bowl practices, because I didn't stay for the game, but I saw it on television. But during practices, I try to use my peripheral vision. I'm looking at the running backs, but I'm watching the wide receivers out of the corner of my eye and the quarterbacks, or I'm watching the quarterbacks with the running backs in the corner of one eye. And whenever I looked up, I I was like, who's that kid? He's never flashy, but always doing the right thing. Whenever you look up, he's doing the right thing. And he was fairly productive in college and, it, and I just think that late in drafts, he's as much of a pick as anybody. I like his work ethic, and that's a big thing. Dude's 5'9", sub 200 in the SEC and ran for 1,600 yards last year. Yeah. That's baller. He, he I think he'll end a, up being more of like a third down back in the NFL. Probably. But, but I still like, think that he's still, somebody that could at yeah. some point produce – and maybe one of those guys that you get fairly cheap. Hey, the right, the right sort of- team, he could end up like Naheem Hines. It's it's funny you bring up third down back because his comparison, Giovanni Bernard. Yep. Hey, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah. G- Giovanni Bernard. He also ran a four four five. So, yeah. so he's his, got quickness for a size too. So his yeah. tiny legs tend to turn <laughs> pretty fast. Imagine Sonic the Hedgehog is what we're looking at. All right. Who lands where? We'll wrap this up here. You have five uh, uh, five guys. Brees Hall, Kenneth Walker, Isaiah Spiller, uh, Rashad White. Is that? Yep. yep. Yeah, we haven't really talked about White yet. Okay, fantastic. We I don't like, need to. Oh, great. <laughs> fantastic. Well, Rashad White's going to go to San Francisco and sit behind 17 other running backs that they have rostered. So and we'll he just... should. He really should. He's going to make sure that it's not Jeff Wilson season if he goes to San Francisco. No Jeff Wilson season. <laughs> Wherever We had to get it in once. We're not live. So yeah. <laughs> Wherever Rashad White goes, I'm out. <laughs> great. Fair wow. Enough. It doesn't matter where he goes. Great. And that's so why and he's another one that I feel like the dynasty community is so like 
this on. Like, you've got some people that have him as high as, like, three, and then other people are just like, he's very meh. His legs are, like, they look like chicken legs. Easy, oh. to, easy to snap. I mean, he really does not have anything. He doesn't have the steak ass. Well, he may have a fairly good, but his chicken calves. Chicken calves. I love it. You can't have uh, a steak ass and chicken calves. You not going to work. <laughs> you hate to see the chicken calves. His player comp on player profiler. You just don't want to get into. Yeah. <laughs> Player profiler comp is David Johnson. No. So. Oh, hell no. Uh-uh. That's you, it's not even close. If you can give me that like eight good games of David Johnson that he had one time in his career, maybe. <laughs> All right, Brees Hall, you have going to Tampa Bay. You feel confident with that even with Fournette there? No, I don't. Oh. You, I don't like player comps and I don't like landing spots. So oh, fantastic. I mean, I amazing. just threw stuff in there so that we could talk about it. Great. Um, okay. Katie doesn't think Brees Hall is going to go to her, Tampa Bay. her and Kevin are like right on point with yeah. us, yeah. like following directions. I love yeah. it. <laughs> no, it's, uh, you told me to put something in there. Yep. I, <laughs> there was a blank. I filled it in. Katie, Katie <laughs> says, I don't think that Leonard Fournette's going to really be there for three years. Sure. And I don't yeah. think so either. Tampa Bay has a luxury of being very solid everywhere else. Maybe he ends up there. It could be Maybe. a luxury pick for them. I mean, they, they, you know, losing Rojo, they don't have that second guy with they didn't have a second guy calling with the Rojo plays. Either, so. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Oh, fair. Thank you, but Katie. But like with, with Bruce Arians not being there, they may not like throw fair. him in the doghouse if he like you know makes one mistake kind of thing. So you know, there's at least some upside, I guess. Well, Tom Brady's still there, and we know Brady throws guys yeah, in, the um, in the doghouse. Katie says Kenneth Walker will not end up as a Houston Texan. She also <laughs> says. Isaiah Spiller won't be freezing his ass off in Buffalo when they build that new stadium. Uh, Rashad White, we already talked about. And Zamir White will go sit behind Ronald Jones. Oh, no, he'll, and... he will take that nope, job. Nope, he will sit behind yes. Ronald Jones, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, and Derek Gore in Kansas City <clears throat> is what Katie says. No, Her words, not, not mine. You're Her reading words... the wrong context. Her <laughs> words, <laughs> not mine. Yeah, is, don't don't be putting that in my mouth. I cannot stress this enough. These are Katie's words. She told me. <laughs> to say. I. He's. <laughs> wow. No, I mean, if if any running back goes to Kansas City, I don't care who you are. You're better than their entire running back roster. They. Have. I just I couldn't imagine are. fantasy Twitter imploding if another running back goes. I think that Kansas so. City is one of those sneaky landing spots. I oh. again, well, and they've got two first round two late first round picks. I mean if they I end don't up know. say, say Zemir, they trade back on one wait. of them, pick up some no. extra draft capital and... I think they could get Zamir White later. So yes. Trade mm -hmm. back. Listen, I, I just I want to go back to the whole because Ryan, you're right. If another running back goes to Kansas City, it's gonna all hell breaks loose on fantasy Twitter. Speaking of hell breaking loose, the only reason I got Jonathan Taylor at the 102 in the rookie draft is because it's Josh good. traded out of the 101 because yeah. someone wanted Clyde Edwards Hilaire. And I was like, oh. And Josh was going to take JT too, which means I, I would have yeah. been, I would have probably been sucker punched into Clyde Edwards Hilaire, which yeah. would have only sent me further back in Dynasty. I was just going to say, which keeps you exactly where you are right now. <laughs> yeah. Which would have been just so much worse. Uh, dang, what a good show. What an absolutely electric show. Katie, I, I will say real quick before we wrap this up, I, no. I like Kenneth Walker in Houston. I think that would be a really good I, spot. When we were running through all of them, I was like, that one's like really nice. I like that <laughs> yeah. one a lot. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm surprised that you didn't peg anybody for Atlanta, Katie. Cordero Patterson, Mike yeah. Davis. Dude's 33 and Mike Davis is hot garbage. Like. Quadri Allison. Atlanta is hot garbage. I uh, mean, come on. They need Sorry, way Andrew. more than yeah. I, I, someone, like, I don't, I don't want to provide that death sentence to anybody because they're all someone. I need to see someone her. tweet Angie, tell her to join at the eight oh four mark because we had our first Atlanta the one oh four mark. Angie, that's when you want to show. That's up. when you want to show up because that's when the Atlanta sucks mark comes in. Okay, uh, yeah, no, no one wants to give that death sentence to to anyone for Atlanta. Um. Tankathon.com has Malik Willis going to Atlanta. So they gave Malik Willis the curse. Uh, you we'll mentioned tankathon.com. I was like, wait, what? They have Atlanta going 101 in 2023? Is that where yeah. you were going? No. No, it's literally called tankathon.com. 
Great website. Also, I'm I'm sorry. Again, I'm looking at like all these guys in the first seven picks they have have zero relevance to most people in fantasy football. Kyle Hamilton, a safety, is six foot four. Yeah, kid's a stud. Why? Yeah, he's a stud. Well, he's coming from Notre Dame, so I'll see it when I believe it on the professional level. Because <laughs> as we all know, I think Kyle Hamilton might have had more touchdowns last year than his former teammate Cole Komet did. <laughs> In the professional. Still had to get it in. I love it. <laughs> Every time, baby. Every time. All right, Katie. Thank you for joining. This was this a lot awesome. of fun. Thank you so much, Katie. Great show. Love thank you. you I always have fun around you guys. Oh, lovely. From the glorious Big Apple, correct? New York City. I believe. I'm in Connecticut right now. Connecticut. All right, we're <laughs> so, close enough. You know, we're Big Apple adjacent. <laughs> we're yeah. a ru- it's the it's the small orange. I'm closer to ESPN. Ah. Go. Bridgeport? No, not Bridgeport. But where Bristol. are they? Bristol. 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 The other, ah, uh, the other B. I'm sorry. <laughs> the other go, B. Joe. Joe, you're just all know. off. Come on. Yeah. Good, good lord. Josh, host again. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be doing it Monday morning. <laughs> yeah. Host again. We'll see how that goes. All right. Big thank you, Katie. Once again, we again we love this. You brought the comedic effect as well, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad. Love it. Well rounded. Yeah. To Katie and Kevin, we just got to stick with the K's. But next week we'll actually be going to the M's because I'm going to read this entire thing that someone put in here, and I imagine someone, it's Joss. Yeah. Thank you. And I will. I I'll read it in my best. I don't know. Give me a voice. Let me let me try and do a fun little Just voice here. Nope. It. Nope. Someone give me a fun voice. Katie, I don't care. Somebody, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? Why don't you read it in Don- your voice? Donald Duck. I can't do Donald Duck. <laughs> Next week, we're back to live broadcasting with our wide receiver edition stars of tomorrow with our first time guest on No Pun Intended. He's been in the fo- fantasy football industry for almost two decades. Jeez, I've barely been alive two decades, <laughs> is the creator of the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. Dang, that sounds like super official. And is one of the football guys' longest tenured contributors. Do we just Can we just get the whole website on the show at this Eventually. point? We're probably Eventually. We're probably close already. Matt Waldman will be yes. joining the show with us next week to talk rookie wide receivers. And also a new episode of Mock It Like It's Hot. Just dropped. If you missed it, be sure to check it out on the YouTube page which is every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern. I hope to join the draft this week. We'll potentially see Kelly Singh with us on this week. That's the the, uh, Josh. We are pre-recording. I I know we're we're, great. We have Kelly Singh on on last week's podcast. So go check it out on the YouTube (laughs) channel. Please, Josh. we're, We're doing this in the future. (laughs) <laughs> we are we are the simpsons it was right? a great never, draft you will never believe what happened you're never gonna believe what happened <laughs> kelly in round seven <laughs> blew my mind oh my goodness we're the simpsons josh we, we're in the future right now we're in the future okay anybody else any last words to say on our stars of tomorrow rookie running back show uh, just big thanks to katie L- always love when she can come on with us and talk running backs and and SAR is now like my new favorite thing in the world. And I need to see more tweets about it, Katie, because I will retweet every single one of them. Yeah. I was going to say, everyone go back to the beginning and pay very much attention to draft capital, because that's how I started ranking rookies last year. And I think that is the best advice given very early on in the show. So thank you, Katie. Yeah, no problem. You guys has been great. And thank you so much for the invite. Always glad to be part of this show. Yeah. Love it. I also I also want to say we've had two great one-liners taken away from both shows. We have Carcass Wentz for yeah. Carson Wentz, coined by Kevin. And we have now the steak ass rating, coined by the diva Very Debbie funny. herself, Miss Katie. No, so, no pressure, Matt. Yeah, no pressure, Matt. You better come with a stick <laughs> one-liner next week. Or so far, I spoiler alert, guys, he might be he might be the worst guest because he doesn't come up with a stick <laughs> one-liner. <laughs> He could, he could come. He's been doing this longer than you're alive. He, yeah. could, he could come with notebooks of information <laughs> that blow my mind. And likely if he will. doesn't come with a good one-liner, he's immediately third on the list of stars of tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so far. Immediately. I mean, you got to come with a sick one-liner so we can end the show like Carcass Wentz and Steak Ass Ratings. Because now every time I look at a running back's ass, I'm going to think of Katie. And that's what's going to Pro, collegiate, doesn't matter. I'm going to think of Katie. All right. There you go. There you for go. 
the one Hudsonian, for the Diva of Debbie, Katie at FF underscore Skyler 399, for Ryan Weiss at the Fantasy Five, and for myself at Joe underscore Zola. You can follow Club Fantasy on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Club Fantasy FFL. The URL is Club Fantasy FFL. Dot com. Always remember, defense wins championships, offense wins fantasy football. We will be back live next week with Matt Waldman, one of the longest tenured contributors for football guys. We will see you next week.